Hi, everyone. Welcome back to my Surat video tutorial for single cell RNA sequencing data analysis. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the sketch-based workflow and uh, analyze a 1.3 million cell data set for the developing mouse brain. First, let us know the all the packages, Surat, BP cells, and the ggplot2. We need to set a maximum size for the future package and also set the option as Surat V5. In my Surat V5 video tutorial 1, we noted the the 1.3 million cell data set and saved the count metrics on disk using the BP cells package. We also created a Surat V5 object and saved as brain RDS. For today's analysis, we can simply read the data in using the Surat function read RDS. You can see in the data window, we have the brain threat object. Now we can normalize the data set. After data normalization, we can find the variable features for this data set. So my laptop only has 32 GB RAM. I will not be able to analyze the full data set on my laptop using the standard Surat workflow analysis. So Surat V5 developed a sketch-based workflow analysis, which makes it possible to analyze this data set on my laptop. Cell sketching method subsamples a small number of cells from a large data set. Importantly, the sketching method not only could select cells representing abandoned cell types in a large data set, but also could preserve rare cell populations. Let's have a look at the brain data set before we perform the cell sketching. You can see we have 27,282 genes and uh, over 1.3 million cells in this data set, and in the assay, we only have one assay RNA. Through that V5 package has a function called a sketch data. We can use this function to subsample cells from a large data set, where the matrix data was stored on disk. After cell sketching, the subsampled cells can be stored in memory for interactive and rapid analysis. So let's sketch 50,000 cells from the 1.3 million mouse brain cells. Then we can perform the standard workflow analysis using the sketched data. Okay, it is done. We can have a look at the object again. You can see now the object has two assays. One is RNA, the other one is sketch. The sketch assay only have 50,000 cells. We will use the sketch assay to perform the standard workflow analysis. At the moment, the default assay should be sketch. If you are not sure, we can check it using default assay brain. You can see the default C is a sketch. We can use the default C function to switch our analysis between sketch a C and the RNA a C. Now we can run the standard workflow analysis on the sketch a C. First, we find the variable features for the sketch a C, then scale the data then run PCA. 
after PCA, we find the neighbors and find the clusters. You can see with the resolution 2, we identified 50 cell clusters in the scratch assay data. So now we can run the UMAP. After you map, we can plot the cells. You can see in the plot windows, we have 50 cell clusters in the scratch assay. We can use the feature plot function to show some mark genes for the different cell population in the scratch assay data. Let's run the feature plot. We can zoom in to see the mark gene expression in different cell populations. For example, you can see neural D6 enables a population of neurons and the DLX2 and the GAT2 enable interneurons in the developing mouse brain and the oligo one enables oligodendrocyte C1KUA enable the immune cell population so we can identify different cell populations in the sketched data set. For knowing the cell clustering for the sketched data set, we can project the PCA and the UMAP to the full data set RNA assay. Use the PCA and the UMAP information from the sketched data set. So let's project the cell clusters from the Sketch C to RNA full data C. Okay, it is done. After PCA and the UMAP projection to the full data set, we can switch the default C to RNA and analyze the full cell data set. Now we can use dim plot to plot all the cells because the full data set has 1.3 million cells. From now on, everything is running very slow. Okay, we have the UMAP for all the cells. You can see we have the same number of cell clusters, 50, for the full data set RNA assay as the sketch assay. If we compare gene expression on the sketched cells and the full data set, for example, the expression of DLX2 gene, it is a mark gene for the precursors of interneurons in developing mouse brain. We can switch the default assay to sketch and plot the DLX2 expression as plot 1 and then switch the default C to RNA and plot the DLX2 expression in the full data set as plot 2. You can see it is very slow to plot DLX2 expression in the full data set. We have both plots now. We can visualize them together in the same figure. Let's zoom in to see the DLX2 positive cell canasters. You can see DLX2 enable the same cell canasters in both assay, scratch assay and RNA assay. They are the precursors for interneurons. Now you can see, use the sketch-based workflow analysis, we can identify cell clusters in the full data set. 
So let's subset the DLX to positive cells. Then we can perform further analysis for DLX to positive cells. So we can use the wiring plot to see more clear which cell cluster express DLX2. We can use the sketcher C to run the wiring plot because it is much quicker to run the wiring plot using sketcher C. So let's switch the default C back to sketch. Then we can run the wiring plot for DLX2. Let's zoom in, you can see cluster 4, 13, 14, 20, 27, and 42 express high level DLX2. So we can subset those cell clusters and create a new threat object as DLX2P. P means positive. So let's run the subset function. So you can see in the data window we have a new threat object DLX2P. We can click the object and have a look. You can see the DLX2 object also has two C, RNA and Sketch. Now we can set the default C for DLX2 as RNA. Then we can analyze all the DLX2 positive cells. You can see we have 226,289 cells in the DLX2 data set. So let's switch the default C for the DLX2P object to RNA. Because now we are going to analyze the full data set. And the full data set was saved on disk. So we need to convert the RNA assay from the disk into memory. So let's have a look at the DLX2 object again. You can see in the assay RNA, we have two layers. One layer is the counts, the other layer is the data. The counts layer save original matrix data on disk and the data layer save normalize the data on disk. So we just need to convert the normalized data from disk into memory. So it is the data layer. So let's convert the data layer into memory. Now we can perform Standard workflow again for all the DLX2 positive cells. We can find the variable features, then scale the data. After that, we run PCA1 UMAP and find the neighbors and find the clusters. Okay, you can see we identified the 27 cell clusters in the DLX positive cells. Now we can use the DIMP node to visualize the cell clusters. You can see now, use the scratchy based workflow, we are able to analyze different population of cells on my laptop. We can use different uh, marker genes to identify different cell populations that give rise to DLX2 positive interneurons during mouse brain development. For example, we can run the feature plot for DLX2 gene LHX6 and NR2F2 gene. So let's run the feature plot. We can zoom in, you can see all the cells express DLX2. So no cells are interneurons and uh, near precursors. The LHX6 gene labels interneurons that were originated from the media ganglionic eminence. The NR2F2 gene labels Interneuron precursors that were originated from the 
quarter Gangani Olnik Eminence. So you can see in this way we can subset uh, and analyze different cell population for the full data set. And we don't have to use the high performance computer. Okay, I'm going to stop my today's tutorial. In summary, I showed you how to use the sketch based workflow and analyze the 1.3 million cell data set for the developing mouse brain. I hope this video tutorial could help your large data set analysis. Please subscribe my channel and share my videos with your friends. Thank you and I hope to see you in my next video tutorial.